Hey, this is Mark Van Bavel, and uh, we're going to take a look at Raylight Cutter. This is a new um, video editing system with a 3D user interface. Uh, and what we're looking at right now is the home screen for Raylight Cutter. And you have three big icons representing the three uh, phases of filmmaking or video making. And towards the left here we have a film camera uh, which represents selecting your clips. So let's click on it or touch it and take a look. Each of these tiles here represents a different file format uh, and these are all the formats uh, that the program can import into your project. Um, let's take a look at one. Let's click on the big Q for QuickTime. This uh, software automatically searches all of your hard drives on your computer for uh, files of that particular format and this basically saves you the work of having to find them yourself. Um, so let's open one of these folders and it's, of course it's only going to show you uh, in this case the quick times that are in that folder. We're going to uh, open one and take a look at it. This is the clip viewer. Um, this particular clip has some color correction in it and I'm going to turn that off here for a second. Um, the controls are very simple. You can play back the clip by hitting the play button. Okay, and I just paused it. Um, this button here is also a crank which you can drag out like that and you can turn the crank and scrub the clip back and forth. Right below that you see uh, the film strip which is that blue uh, ribbon and it shows you how far you are in the clip. Uh, at this point you can also um, make cuts to the clip. There I just made a head cut and I'm going to go over here and make a tail cut and this basically is the selected part of the clip that I'm going to drag into my project. At the same time you can look at the soundtrack by clicking on the audio box and as I scrub back and forth you can see the soundtrack below there. Um, you can make changes to the soundtrack. For example if I want to uh, make it a little bit quieter I uh, can do this. I'm changing the volume for the whole track there. Um, you can also uh, make steering changes if I want this track to go to the right speaker, I click on this cube over here and now it's coming out of the right speaker. You can do more precise surround steering with the uh, screening room uh, device, which is this thing right here. It basically shows you some speakers in a room and you can use that to uh, move the sound around and place it very precisely. Also control how much is going to the subwoofer and to the surround speakers. All right, we're going to close that. And then if you want to uh, add the clip to your project, you just drag from the frame over to the uh, reel icon over to the right. In this case, I'd be inserting the clip right here. And I'm going to release it there. And now you can see the clip. And there's the thumbnail uh, in your project there. Color correction is mostly done with the keyboard. Uh, here I'm going to turn the color correction on for this clip. Uh, you can see that it shows a histogram and you can uh, look at red, green, or blue. Uh, you can change the gamma for those individual channels. There's uh, numerous controls. Here I can change the hue. Um, you have nonlinear correction. Uh, you can do uh, green screen effects and so forth. Raylight Cutter uh, supports playback on a second monitor. That's done with this two icon right here on the left hand side of the of the viewer frame. You can add titles to a clip by dragging the title icon into the screen and uh, entering some text. Here I'll go ahead and put in a title. And there's some very basic title controls. Um, I'll just show you a few. Here I'm making, changing the size of the title, um, changing the color, 
Uh, I can control the transparency. Obviously, you can move the title around and so forth. Um, you can change the font. You can make it scroll. Um, you can fade titles in and out and so on and so forth. There's also the capability to do your titling with an external um, editor like Photoshop and then it'll superimpose the titles onto the clip. Okay, we've gone back to the home screen and I'm going to show you some more of the editing features of the program. Let's click on the main editing reel. and You can see this is a project that is basically consists of four scenes and each scene is shown as a small reel contained within the larger reel. And if I want to go in and edit one of those scenes, uh, you just click on it, it opens up, and we can see the shots that are in that uh, scene or sub-reel. We can go back to the main reel, and we can look at scene number four. Let's open scene number four, and you can see that it consists of not of three shots but of three more sub reels and uh, in this way you can build a really really large project by breaking it up into little scenes or sections of scenes and then combining them together it allows you to work on a very large project by concentrating on uh, relatively small and uh, manageable uh, manageable parts of it and let's go back to the home screen and I'll show you the settings screen which are the gear icon over here and this basically is project settings so we can select the uh, frame rate can go up or down with that um, Raylight Cutter supports 2K and 4K projects uh, frame rate we have uh, European and US frame rates uh, aspect ratio the ones that are supported right now 16 by 9, 185, Cinemascope, and 4 by 3. And these are audio settings. This is the audio sample rate, um, bits per channel, 16 or 24, and the number of audio channels. In this case, this would be a stereo project, and this would be a, a surround project. And once you're happy with the settings, you click on the little house and it brings you back to the main screen. Alright, let's take a look for a second at uh, exporting a project. After you've done editing, you can export the whole project or export one scene, for example. You um, click on the projector and this shows the various formats that you can export to. Uh, QuickTime, AVI, uh, DVD or Blu-ray, uh, P2MXF files, uh, DCP, which is for digital projection, MPEG, AVC, Windows Media Files, uh, sound files. For example, if I want to export a, a DVD of my project, I select a suitable frame size for DVD. So this would be um, NTSC DVD. You select a US or European frame rate. Um, 24p. This control over here controls the compression for the intermediate file. 1 to 1 is an uncompressed file. Uh, 2 to 1 is a YUV type file. 5 to 1 is a uh, DV or uh, DVC Pro HD compression. Uh, 10 to 1 is a H.264 type compression or MPEG-2 compression. Uh, these controls here select the uh, audio uh, bits per channel, number of channels, and the sample rate. And this folder over here allows you to select what folder you're going to export the project to. And once you've done, got all the settings set correctly, you basically hit the green go button and it'll start the export. While it's running you can uh, do other things, you can edit another project even. Here are some other formats you can export to, like for example for audio, you can export to AIFF, WAV, MPEG-3, AC, AC3 format. You can export still sequences, uh, JPEGs, bitmaps, TIFF files, PNG files, DPX files. Um, this is for DCP authoring. 
again you select your uh, frame size like if I wanted to make a, a 2k DCP I'd select that setting right there alright that's been my introduction to ray light cutter and for more information please go to dvfilm.com slash cutter thanks very much